Millions of Brits come to Benidorm every year in southern Spain. And I've never been before. I've never seen the place before. So it's mid-February. I took a very early flight down from Madrid this morning and just landed here at Alicante Airport. And we're going to take the short ride on the Beni Express into Benidorm itself. It takes about 45 minutes, apparently. With 10 million visitors a year, this once sleepy fishing village now boasts more than 1,000 bars and a contrasting new and old town. Being a lifelong fan of ITV's hit show Benidorm, I couldn't wait to try a bargain break here, staying at the popular and cheap £35 a night hotel Queens. So coming up today, amongst other things, we visit some of the locations where ITV's Benidorm was filmed, along with walking to the Cross of Benidorm. So stick with me, we've got lots to do, lots to see in the next 24 hours, and we'll see what we make of good old Benidorm. First impressions, I have to confess, are not good. This looks like a concrete jungle, which is my worst nightmare. But I never let first impressions put me off, so let's see what Benny really has to offer the modern day tourist. So this is room 52 in the Queen's Hotel in Benidorm, deep in the old town. And I have to say, it's very nice for 36 pounds a night. It's fairly small, but it's not tiny. Reading some of the reviews on TripAdvisor, some people complain about a bad odor in the room. Some people complain about the room being tiny and there's not enough room to move about in the bathroom. Um, I have to say, I can't see any of those things. I've stayed in worse for a lot more money. Let me show you around, it probably won't take too long. So we've got a small double bed, as you can see. It's probably not gonna fit two people. Well, it might at a push, but still, it's not bad. Tea and coffee making facilities. Uh, it's all very clean, the cups are fairly new from Ikea. The kettle's really good in the fact that it's uh, clean and it's small, it's functional. We've got a safe there as you can see and that's included in the room rate so some hotels in Spain will charge you an extra between two and five euro a day to use the safe but it's included here. We've got some modern cupboards, we've got some modern hanging space and it's all very clean. That's the thing that strikes me and that's the thing that always worries me with these smaller, cheaper hotels is, how clean are they going to be? To be fair, I've never seen any complaints about the cleanliness of this hotel on TripAdvisor. And here's the bathroom. So yeah, there's a bit of an odor, a very slight odor, but nothing too worrying. And you've got a, well, <laughs> it's a sort of a mini bath there. I think you'd have to be quite small to get in there, but we've got a fully functional shower. And as you can see, usual toiletries and perfectly clean sink. What strikes me about this room and the hotel generally is that it is super, super clean. No faults, no complaints so far. So the sun's come out quite nicely now and um, just a seagull up on the roof here with me which I'll show you in a moment. But up here on the seventh floor uh, you can see all around Benidorm. Uh, it's getting quite warm now actually. Uh, and there's a bar here as well so we'll pop back later and I'll show you that. But let me just show you around, let me show you the view. So you've got all around the bay there, as you can see. And what we're going to do now, is I'm going to take a walk along the front there. And then we're going to walk up to the Benidorm Cross and get a few photos up there. And then I'll show you some of the sights because I really loved the ITV series Benidorm. And that's really what inspired me to come here. And I really wanted to see some of those sights, and I'm squinting a bit because it's quite bright now. <laughs> I have to get my sunglasses out. But um, yeah, really wanted to see some of those places, the locations where they filmed Benidorm, because I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about that series. I've watched it so many times. Sometimes if I've just got a spare half hour or an hour, I'll just put an episode on, because they're all on sort of Netflix and ITV Player and stuff back home. <laughs> Having never been to Benidorm, I've never seen the Hotel Solana and obviously never seen the bar where they filmed at the Neptune's bar, if you remember that, if you were also a fan of Benidorm like I was. So I think what we'll do is um, we'll get everything set up. I'll get out of here, go for a walk. Really looking forward to it. The sun's just starting to come out. It's about 11 o'clock. Might be earlier than that, in fact. It's 10 to 11 and everything's good and everything's good. And the other thing I should say about the Queen's Hotel here is despite the fact that I've arrived very, very early, they had my room ready. So they gave me the key, they've allowed me to use it, so I went for a quick shower, set everything up, put everything in the safe, for no extra charge. There was no early check-in fee or anything like that. 
So, so far, so good. Let's go. And so just as you come off the main sort of staircase into the rooms, you've got then the staircase that goes down to the reception area, a little seating area here, and they've also thoughtfully put some books here as well. So if you want to go back to your room or sit here and have a read of something, you're available to borrow a book. And the staff are really nice too. I have to say for £36, this is turning out to be one of the best deals I've ever had in a hotel. And so uh, here we are on the seafront. It's not warm, as in, I can't see anybody swimming. And I certainly won't be. It's not warm, but it's not cold either. I've just got a long sleeve jumper on and it's fine. And it's fine, I've brought my jacket just in case, but I don't think I'm going to need it. It's really pleasant here. And I'm starting to see why so many people, older people, come here from Britain for three months at a time. Particularly in the winter, because it's quite cheap when you get here. It's certainly cheap to stay in the hotels at this time of the year. And of course you've got a very pleasant climate. Not baking, but not cold. And I'm quite surprised by that because I've been to the Balearic Islands before at this time of the year, which are not far from here. And it's cold, it's noticeably cold. Whereas here, I don't know, it's almost like uh, Benidorm's got its own little microclimate. Uh, so let me show you this. So, I don't know if you can see that, but GPS is telling me it's 2.4 miles to the Benidorm Cross. So, uh, <laughs> Just walking past, I overheard a couple just walking past me there. <laughs> Guy said to his wife, well, obviously a British chap, he said, you know, the thing is, he said, you can spot the Brits from a mile because they're all so white and pasty faced. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's true actually. <laughs> that's true. Probably looking at me when he said it. Look at that guy. <laughs> With his hat on and his sunglasses. Wishfully optimistic. <laughs> so let me know in the comments. If, like me, you watched the ITV series Benidorm, and especially if you've watched it, and then you came here as a result, because I think that series probably drove a lot of curious travellers to come and see if it was really like that. And so far, it does live up to expectations, in the sense, it's very like Benidorm. So I was just walking past a few of the bars. Couldn't film them, unfortunately, because they've got the music quite loud, and obviously, YouTube's a bit weird about stuff like that. But I'll try and get some on the way back. I'll just overlay it with some lift music or something. <laughs> but there are obviously people here, not necessarily on hen or stag dudes, but definitely Brits, judging by the football tops. And just drinking pints at 11 o'clock in the morning, which is fine, that's what I do sometimes. But they're having a good time. That's the thing that strikes me here. Just like in Benidorm, just like in the series, people get up, they have the belly buster breakfasts, and then they head down and start drinking. <laughs> it is just like the series. It's just like the series. See, that's the other thing I was wondering about as well, because if you saw my Lanzarote video before Christmas, you'll know that I absolutely loved going on those scooters. And they're very relaxed and very laid back about it in the Canary Islands. But I couldn't see any to just rent with an app here. I think you have to get them from official outlets and given I'm just here for the day it's sort of not worth the hassle I don't think I was just sort of thinking about things I can tell you about my first impressions of Benidorm look around you I mean it's not the prettiest of places the hotels I mean the sea view the sea and all that sounds great but strikes me as one of those places that was allowed to grow out of control don't forget, don't forget one of the reasons for that though is that Benny was one of, you know, well not just one of, it was the package holiday destination that kicked off package holidays back in the 60s for the Brits when cheap jet travel was first discovered. Benidorm, or Benny, really cashed in on that. But if you look around, it's almost in some respects Soviet in design. Huge complexes, places to live, cheap places to live. They're not pretty, they're not attractive, and they're certainly not modern. I, I dare say it's a bit of an eyesore, to be honest. And then you come across 
some newer hotels like the Hotel Breeze there, yeah, which looks quite modern, looks quite nice, proper little four star place. Didn't come up when I was doing my research, maybe it's still shut for the winter. Oh no, it's open. But you get my point. It's just not. It's not an attractive place, but it's a good place to come, I suppose, if you want a really cheap break. So, status update for you. I've just stopped. I could make an excuse and say I'd stop to show you the scenery. The fact is, I've stopped for a break because the world's unfittest man, that would be me. I'm not struggling. I'm not struggling. I'm determined. I'm going to get the cross. I'm within almost spitting distance of it now. But, yeah. If there's one thing that climbing this, well, feels like climbing a mountain, it's not, it's basically a hill. <laughs> My body's telling me it's a mountain. If there's one thing that climbing this hill has taught me is that I really, really need to get fitter than I am right now. You know, there's people older than me quite happily walking faster than me. And somebody's nearly at the top already. And I'm probably half their age. <laughs> it's embarrassing, really. At this point, I'd just like to say a huge thanks to all of my great Patreon supporters. It's people like Joe, Joshua, Kieran, and James who enable me to bring these videos to you month in, month out. A huge thanks to all of you. So I had a boss once, and I think I mentioned it uh, in a previous video, who, this, this boss, he was, he really thought, he was really helpful, he was a nice guy, one of the nicest people I've ever worked for, in fact. And he really thought he was mentoring me and helping me with some of the one-liners, the motivational quips that he came out with. And uh, he said to me, he said, uh, every problem is an opportunity. That was one of his. And I think I mentioned that in the Fiat video that we did in uh, Grand Canaria the other day. But one of his others was that determination always outwits physical limits. Well, all I can say is I wish he was with me now, <laughs> because I am determined to get to the cross of Benidorm. Physical limits <laughs> are definitely there. <sighs> I'm trying to think of all the glorious motivational one-liners <laughs> he had for me. He was a great boss, I have to say. He was a great guy, best guy, one of the best guys I've, one of the best guys I've ever worked for. But yeah, he believed that nothing was impossible. Nothing was impossible. And yet he's still alive. So, there we go. As you can tell by my breath. We made it to the Benidorm Cross. And there she is. At the very top. Looking out. Protecting Benidorm and it's people. But the view is fantastic. It was well worth the effort, well worth the climb. Probably could do with a cross near me because uh, probably should say some prayers <laughs> given the general state of my fitness at the moment. So on that note, you're probably thinking, well, what's the relevance of the cross of Benidorm? What does it mean? Other than obviously having some religious connotation as crosses invariably do. Are you ready? And I quote, here we go. So, at the end of 1961, at the request of Father Salvador Perona, people from Benidorm, in an evangelizing mission, in order to redeem the city from its frivolous reputation, carried a huge cross on their shoulders from San Jaime and Santa Ana Church to Sierra Helada. Over the years, the cross has become another of Benidorm's beautiful tourist attractions. And I quite agree. Uh, so just out there in the distance, the small island is uh, Peacock Island. You can't really see it on the camera that well, I don't think. But uh, again, it was featured in the series in Benidorm, the ATV series, a couple of times, not very often. Uh, the two times that stick out in my mind were the first time when our friend Donald Trump of Benidorm, Mel Harvey, was with his family and he went across and wanted to buy it and develop a hotel on the island and a few other things turned into a tourist resort. Second time was when Joyce Temple Savage got married to Monty. And of course, you remember Monty, John Chalice from Only Fools and Horses, Boise. And they went and got married on the island and had literally chips and rice for the meal. 
and then got unceremoniously dumped on the island. And that's my second memory of how Peacock Island was featured in the Benidorm series. So, just down from the Benidorm Cross and back on the seafront again, heading to see some of those famous sites, or sites made famous because of that ITV series Benidorm, which I really enjoyed and loved so much. So I think what we should do now is go find the Solana Hotel, which is not called the Solana in real. It's actually Sol Pelicanos Orcas, I think. But let's go find it. And so just behind me is the Sol Pelicanos Orcas. Of course, we all know it as the Solana from the ITV series. Well, there you go. It is real. You can stay in it. It is a fully functional Sol Hotel. Uh, lots of the interior scenes are obviously not filmed here. So what other landmarks can I show you that were made famous by one of my favourite TV series ever? In this great town, it's really growing on me. I have to say, I thought I'd absolutely hate it, but it is nice. It is nice. Uh, so I do have to show you this because <laughs> it did make me chuckle. So when I was in Berlin recently, uh, there was a car rally on a Ferrari car rally and out the front of the Hilton, which is where I was staying, which is where some of the car owners were staying and some of the uh, team sponsors were staying for this car rally from Ferrari. All these Ferraris were lined up, parked up outside. And um, whilst I hate stereotyping, I do just have to show you these cars <laughs> that are parked up outside the Solana, the, uh, the Sol. <laughs> Here we go. And there they are, all four of those mighty beasts just ready to be revved up and driven around Benidorm. <laughs> it does just typify what I've seen today so far. It's quite funny. So what we have here, of course you'll remember this, is Neptunes. So uh, all of the exterior shots were filmed here. Neptunes, the exterior shots anyway, which were featured in so many episodes, so many episodes. Some of the stars from the show. <laughs> Oh, still chuckle now, still chuckle. One of the things that's often said about Benidorm is that it's like Blackpool of Spain. I loved Blackpool as a child, so as a comparison to me, if somebody says, well, it's Blackpool of Spain, well, I think, well, so what? That's fine. I'd probably quite like it. And certainly if you look down this street where I am at the moment, which is just down from Neptune's, which we just saw, you see yourself. It is blackpool -y in the sense that it's kind of, you know, row after row and shop after shop of currency exchanges and fast food and tourist tap. There is that, but you get that in any city. I grew up in York and you would not believe the amount of tourist tap that you can now buy there. Well, Benidorm by night. It's about 20 to 7 now. Sunset in about five minutes time, officially. It's rather precise for you, isn't it? And I thought I'd just show you what's happening. So I'm back down on the seafront. My feet are now recovered from what turned out to be a nearly 10 mile walk today around the town. Plus, obviously, we saw the cross. So people tell me that, like most cities and towns, Benidorm really comes alive at night. And it certainly seems to have done. Oddly, there are now more people on the beach this evening than there were during the daytime today. So we'll take a long, yeah, I think we'll take a walk on the beach and then I'm going to find somewhere to eat. So let's go take a walk on the beach. Probably get my shoes full of sand, but who cares? It doesn't matter. It's a nice evening. What's that price then for a lounger and an umbrella? Six euro each, 12 euro for the day. Hmm. It's not too bad, I suppose. Not too bad. So I'm just walking in the old town of Benidorm now, as you can see the sun set. And walking down these quite narrow streets, and it's really nice. It's not the Benidorm you think of. When you Google Benidorm, you should try it yourself. Google Benidorm. And what you'll see is bars, bright lights, brash music. In the new town, basically. 
What they don't tell you about really is the old town too much. And that's where my hotel is. And that's what I like about being here. Very understated. In fact, I thought it was somebody's house until I saw the menu on the wall there. And that's what the old town's all about. This is why Benidorm's growing on me. The old town. It's really nice. Uh, so I've just stopped for a pint just before I go and find somewhere to have dinner. Just on a quick walk down the seafront. And this place is absolutely heaving. I always say it in my Spanish videos. If you're going to come out and have dinner anywhere in Spain, don't even think about doing it until eight o'clock at least. Because that's when things just change massively. I'll show you in a moment. I'm just sat, as I said, in the old town. And there is just, there are just thousands and thousands of people just meandering around. The shops are still open. It's actually temperature wise, it hasn't really dropped much since sort of three, four this afternoon. You can probably hear in the background just how busy it is. You might have realised there's a lot of noise at the moment. And what I haven't realised is that tonight is uh, the annual Benny Carnival, uh, which is just about to kick off now. It's very exciting. I had no idea this was on tonight. Uh, it's just on nine o'clock in the evening and it's just about to start. I wondered why people were dressed up. There's people dressed as dinosaurs. There's people dressed in all sorts of colours. People are really buying into this thing and I'm so excited that I just happened to pick the day this year to come to Benidorm when it was the annual Benidorm Carnival. Uh, so I'm just back at the uh, bus stop now waiting for the coach. It's take me on the uh, 50 minutes or so ride back up to Alicante Airport before I fly back home north. Um, had a great time here in Benidorm. I think captured most of what's happening down here at the moment. Uh, as you saw, I went to the carnival last night. It was a fairly early start. It's half past six now in the morning and I probably left the carnival about 1am and it was still going full strength at that point and I've just seen some people walking home now <laughs> clearly just stayed out all night and I think that must be the point of the carnival and, and why not you know it's uh, it was really good fun uh, like Benidorm itself I've definitely warmed to it uh, but I've only had a day here I need to come back and explore it some more but I think I've captured the best bits so you saw a really cheap but nice hotel we saw the Benidorm cross yesterday we saw some of those places that uh, were made famous by that ITV series that I loved so much, Benidorm. And of course, we walked across the seafront, saw some nice places. So on that note, I will end the video here. Thanks a million for watching as always. I'll see you next time. And that's my coach there.